Welcome to the Casual Christian Nutrition Veggie Tales Reviews, and I will never shorten that name. I'm your host, Wesley, and of course, I'm joined by my co-host for these reviews. Mary. And Mary, what episode, it's episode four, but what episode are we reviewing today? It's entitled, The Power of Love. It's entitled? It feels entitled? entitled. No, it's entitled. Like, we're entitled to the power There's of two, love. Okay. Two it's ways, the power two of definitions love. of entitled. Very good out of your system now, I'm dancing. Ba, ba, yeah, ba. they can really tell. Yeah, everyone on the on the review can hear me dancing. Their dancing. titles are just so terrible. Yeah, no, the titles are definitely garbage. The best Christmas gift is the only one that kind of feels like it could have been a VeggieTales episode title, but mm-hmm. the rest of these are like, ugh. I know we talked about that before. We won't bash over the head too much for that, but uh, not great on the titles. But I think at the point they got you on Yippee streaming, it doesn't matter. They don't have to entice you with it like a good name like on the DVDs. Sure. So anyways, the power of love. Mm -hmm. How does this episode start out? Well, they're backstage, surprisingly. What? And actually, this part of the show I I liked because Larry comes in with an Mm -hmm. idea for the show. For once. For once. Someone has an idea for a show. And Larry's like, we should do a show about platypus. Which, by the way, Larry always starts the episode off with a joke and then from there is a straight man. So here's his joke for this episode. Here's his joke. He wants to do a show about a platypus because a platypus is half duck and half beaver and he thinks it's God's joke and it's so funny. Yes. And I was like, this could be really fun. Let's do a show about a platypus. I was like, yeah. It reminded me about, yeah, it reminded me about Barbara Manatee and like how they did a, a song about Manatee. Yes. Like, Platypus. I can get into or this. Or like when they did episodes in like the first segment of the episode was just for fun. Just fun. Yep. And nope, Bob immediately shuts it down. Nope. Can't do that. That's dumb. And Bob clarifies that multiple platypuses are platypi. Yes. But yes, to- Bob shuts it down and there was not a time more in my life I wanted to kick Bob <laughs> in his tomatoey face uh, and get him out of the room because the platypus idea was gold and they should have done that for the first segment of this episode. What but they do, not. Nope, they do they not. No, they don't. They just tease it. All right, so they're not going to do the platypus play. What are the? What, so what, Laura what comes waltzing in, singing and lightheaded and whatever, giggly. Mm-hmm. She's fallen in love with some teenager in a magazine, and Junior's like, he doesn't even uh, know you exist. I have to pause here. That's unrealistic. Do teenagers even read magazines anymore? It's no. 2020. Well, teenagers, no. if anything, are looking at cute boys on Instagram. Sure, she should have been looking at her Instagram, Snapchat, or whatever. But she's a she's in love with this teen pop star or whatever. Basically, yeah. And uh, so they're like, "Oh, let's do a segment a segment about love." And Bob's like, "Oh, love, mushy love." Can we talk about literally anything yes. else? Yes. Yeah. And and oh, because that was his reason. Sense. That was his reason for not wanting to talk about the platypus because they had to talk about things in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And he said there are no platypuses in the Bible or platypi, <sighs> whatever. There could have been. Yes. And so then, <laughs> Mr. Lunt gives a uh, Mr. Lunt. <laughs> tries to quote the bible about platypuses yes. and bob's like that's not a bible verse <laughs> that was also funny that was pretty funny mr lunt had a joke there yeah he did so then um so then petunia is like okay well the, the bible does talk a lot about love so we we should do a show about love and what is true love and so then every keeps naming things that they love and at this point mr lunt again has a good joke and he goes, love is a cheeseburger, which harkens back to, Yeah, of they did that as a wink wink to the audience, yes. uh, to people like us, which but I, I appreciate. Liked it. Yes, I appreciated yeah, so that. As long as we're not doing too much of it, yeah, it's appreciated. Right. So that was good. So then, you know, Petunia's like, no, you all have it completely wrong, but no one's really listening to her. So Archibald decides yeah. that since... Well, she's just a secretary. She's not important, apparently. Archibald decides this, and it's Laura is so in love that they'll learn everything they need to know about interviewing her. Mm-hmm. So the first segment song is... <laughs> Which, by the way, I thought Archibald was smarter than that. Why would he think that Laura... Well, again, he's now... Girl, he's now become the joke. Like, him and Mr. Lund are now providing all the jokes. And the much. French peas whenever they're there. And the French peas. But otherwise, everyone else is a straight character. Yeah. So Archibald goes in. He's a doctor, and he's examining Laura, and... She gives him all the symptoms for love, and it's just a silly song about. Uh huh. And they, but the interviews are her in like a doctor's office because he's like trying to figure out what's wrong with her. Mm-hmm. Essentially, it's more like a and physical exam. It's, it's pretty silly. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think we had a missed opportunity here by not doing it similar to when he interviewed Larry about his lips. I think that. I think that would have been too much of a nod back. You know what though, like. Who are we nodding to here? We're nodding to people who have watched the show since, what, 1995 at that point? 
like we're talking about like 25 years ago mm -hmm. and any kids watching now aren't gonna like know this is just a callback in terms of the set sure. i don't know the doctor's office to me felt a little off when we cut to it because i'm like he said he's gonna interview her like he could have been doing it for a newspaper he could have been doing it for yeah um a newspaper well, i guess we did have a magazine in this episode uh but i mean like the he, interviewing her in a doctor's office is not what i imagine when i think interviews so that's why i thought like maybe the therapist idea would be hilarious sure to go back to he that could, would have been more in line. Would have been with, more fitting with an interview. With an so interview. he should have said, "Let's go find out what's wrong with you," right, <laughs> or, or something, something like that. Like it's that. just a bad expectation by saying, "Let's go interview mm -hmm. you." But yes, uh, this is this is. I prefer when they do, even though this isn't. This wasn't like, ha, that's hilarious. I prefer when they have a silly segment like mm -hmm. this, um, which I think is what the first segment should be of these new Veggie Tales shows. Mm -hmm. But the Petunia one in the last episode proved that sometimes it could just be a normal song about what we're teaching about. So right. it's like up in the air whether it's going to be silly or not. But basically, Archibald has no idea. <laughs> what to do. What to do. Right. Yep. And by the end of the song, Laura's fallen in love with, with a, different a different boy. A boy. It's from a different man. Can we clarify? So. This is not love. This is lust. This is not love or lust. This is, as she says in the song, she's in love with the idea of being in love. Yeah. Which is crushing whatever but she's a like. but she's like a little girl sure she's like a tween she's like a tween yeah she doesn't yeah. okay but we're no we, obviously but knowing the show is corrected the fact that this isn't love laura does not know what true love is <laughs> all about no so then petunia is like please stop i know what love is about i will have to tell you the story yes. so then we tell the story once again of ruth and naomi but don't say once again because in what episode of veggie tales do they do this i know you, you're right though they're doing once robin again, but good within the new veggie tale show they have not done this no not within but, this four episode veggie tales well i wanted to draw comparisons here because you're right that they do that so if you see in the robin hood i believe it's robin, hood. robin no good. no it's not robin it's not Robin Good and his Mary, not so Mary Men. This is something else. This is a different episode. Can you it look, is Robin look that up Good while we're on here? Mary Men. No, this it's that's the one where he Okay. Uh we're looking it up right now to double check. But basically they tell the story of Ruth, which they do do in another episode of Original Veggie Tales. But both but the story here and the story in that one start at different points. This one starts with Ruth way back when. When she had like a different husband, she meets him, marries him. Um, the husbands bring the husband brings a pizza, which I think was very important to the story. Um, and but 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 in the original Veggie Shell's story, we don't meet her until her husband's already gone. Uh, she's no longer married; she's a widow. And then she meets the new the new guy. Have you found it, Mary? I think you're right. Yeah, it wasn't called Robin Good. It was called You're something right. else. But if you hand me, hand me the thing, I can find it. I can tell you which one it was. Um, no, Robin Good is not some married man. I remember that review because I did a sarcastic review. Sorry, he's wearing the same outfit-ish. That's why I was thinking that it was Robin Good. No, that's okay. But Well, who is he? I haven't even said who he is yet. Larry. Well, once again, yeah. sorry. Once again, Larry plays the part of Boaz. Petunia plays the part of Ruth. Uh, Madame Blueberry plays the part of Naomi. So they, it's like the same story. Although you're right, it does start earlier in the story. It tells the whole story. Mm -hmm. It doesn't start. But I don't think it, it doesn't go as far though as like it's like because it starts earlier, it doesn't go as far into the story as, um, or it maybe it doesn't get as detailed. It doesn't get as detailed because it's a short play. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, so once again, uh, I'll stop saying it once again. So she tells the story of Ruth and Naomi and their family. It starts out with. Naomi and her husband, Ahimelech, whatever you said that, say that, and uh, tells the whole story of their sons. They meet Ruth and Orpah in Moab. They get married. Then all the men die. And then Naomi decides to go home. And Ruth wants to stay with her. So then we cliffhang on, will Ruth stay with Naomi or not? And in this cliffhang segment... We once again have to decide something really quick to do on stage. Although why everyone has to come off stage. There's no like scene change or anything. The background changes during it. Oh, and I also wanted to say most of the time the vegetables are hopping. Like was it, I think this is from Duke and the Great Pie War. Yes, that was it. Yeah. Duke and the Great Pie War. I'm sorry. Um, because here we go. In the main feature of Duke and the Great Pie War, 
Lair the Cucumber is a knight from the Kingdom of Scone in the Middle Ages. How you Okay, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Petunia is a rhubarb barbarian. She's a rhubarb barbarian. Yes, in the original Vegetal story. Yes, because they tell the first half of it in like storybook form, mm -hmm. and then they like jump into the story. Yeah. yeah. So this is, if you've seen Duke and the Great Pie War, this is almost like a new retelling of it. Much shorter. Much shorter. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like a shorter retelling of it on okay. stage. So now we have the answer to that question. No, it definitely was not Robin Good and not Samaria Men. Yeah, sorry. All right. Um, yeah, so we cut that cliffhanger. And no, wait. I'm sorry, we went to so we were at the cliffhanger. Yeah, I but I went back because oh, right okay. before the cliffhanger, Ruth is singing a song, and during this whole thing, the vegetables hop like they always do. But mm -hmm. in this song, she's oh. gliding on the stage. She's like for some sliding reason. around the stage. Yeah, yeah, but she's like, it was so weird. And then she hops off the stage later, and I just. But didn't Madame Blueberry is like right next to her, bouncing. Yeah, and Madame Blueberry still hopping because she's while singing. Bad. Okay. <laughs> Petunia's not fat. She's a beautiful vegetable who, who has a full head of hair, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes it very confusing as to what vegetable she is. Anyways, okay. So, cliffhanger, and then what is the segment for this cliffhanger break? You're asking me, but mm -hmm. I don't remember top of my head. Can you remind it's Mr. me? Mr. Lunt. We just talked oh, about Oh, we talked about it before the episode because there was yeah. something Mr. Lunt did. Yeah, so I don't... <laughs> it's not a song. No. <laughs> it's probably the best segment of the whole episode. This is the one of the best segments of the whole show so far. Mr. Lunt decides he's, <laughs> he's going to tell us what love is, Mary, right? I, I and guess. And so he That's stacks a bunch of boxes of chocolates on one part of a seesaw. And he, from my room. Well, from, first uh -huh. he gets on the seesaw. Yeah. And then he has the French peas push the box of chocolates, which surprisingly are heavier than Mr. Lund. Yeah. He heavy enough to throw him into the air. Yes. They put the box of chocolates on the seesaw, which launches Mr. Lund in the air. And somehow the chocolates also get launched up in the no, air. No, he gets launched and then he comes back down and he hits the seesaw again. And, and then launches goes, the chocolates, yes. which then get launched in the air, which then mostly all land in his mouth i think but he does make a big mess that was yeah i think that was the point was for him to eat the chocolates while they're falling yeah back mr down lunt there. just wanted to find yes. a way to eat some chocolates but it just made a huge mess basically but yeah it was, it was kind great. of like uh and he pops up out of the bo boxes saying that's the meaning of true love <laughs> eating <laughs> eating lots of chocolates or something 10 like out of that. 10 we need more things like that that's the stuff we're missing so, That's the stuff Larry used to do. Yes. It was pretty funny. It wasn't a song. It was just a short no, little gimmick. But because they're on stage, they can do short little things mm -hmm. like this and be like, it's cool. Yeah. Whereas I felt like in a normal VeggieTales episode when they did like stuff like that, it's like, oh, now we have like four segments this episode or like this is an unnecessary segment. But like here on stage, it's like, thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need more things like this to be in the show. Uh, to break up the uh, seriousness of the main story. So, great. Perfect. I loved it. I'm, you don't have the same look of love. It was, I don't know. I had the power of love looking at this part. It was kind of funny, but it was just like, what? I think because I really enjoy Mr. Lon as a character. I really enjoy the character that Larry used to play, and now Mr. Lon's playing, basically. Sure. Um, it's probably my favorite character in Bed Shells is whoever's being that person. Right now, it's Mr. Lund. So I'm totally on board with this. Ten, out, if it was just if, if the whole episode was just this part, I'd be like that was short, but ten out of ten, I loved it. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> anyways, so then we wrap up the uh, we wrap up the Ruth story, mm -hmm. right? Which surprisingly, if you hear oh they're doing the story of Ruth, you would think the love lesson is about Larry and Ruth, which it kind of is, but it's mainly. Ruth and Naomi. Ruth putting Naomi above herself and sacrificing for her and how love is a sacrifice. And so then once Larry falls in love with Ruth, he also sacrifices for her and takes care of her. Um, I would do anything for love. Yeah. But I won't Basically. do that. Except Whatever Larry that doesn't is. say that part. He right. will do that. Yeah, so it was cute. It ends with Ruth proposing to Larry, basically. Or not Larry, Boaz, whatever. Petunia po proposing to Boaz. And that's the end of the story. And then yep. we have the onstage final scene. Yep. And this time... Oh, by the way, they also do the theme song at the beginning of the episode. And the, and the sign falls again, again. almost murdering yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And there's no hole in the floor or anything. No, a yeah. bunch of garbage on that <laughs> one. <laughs> All right. So anyways, what were you saying? The show ends with John claude Jean Claude, dressed as Cupid, Cupid with a bow and arrow. Uh huh. And, and Larry's like, "Are you an angel or Cupid?" And he's like, "Both." He says, "What's the difference?" Yeah, I think. what's the difference? Yeah. Which I think is a very confusing message to the kiddos, because <laughs> <laughs> Cupid is a made-up character, and angels are real. 
Yeah. So there's a bit a bit of a mixed message there from the Christian show of Edgy Shells. Um, but anyways, instead of a fortune cookie, what does he use? Do you remember what he uses? Yeah, to... the bow and arrow. That's yeah. how he delivers. He shoots his uh, his arrow up in the air. It lands down the ground. It's a plunger arrow, classic Veggie Shells. And that's what gives Bob the verse this time instead of a fortune cookie. Right, and, and I, I think he's disappointed again. But... Well, I'm actually hoping that from now on, every time John Claude comes, he gives a different way of giving the verse instead of always doing a fortune cookie. Yeah, that would be more interesting if he finds a different way to give the verse. Yeah, 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 yeah. The fortune cookie... We did it back to back to- oh, three times in a row. And by the third time, I'm like, well, this joke's played <laughs> out. Like the first time, ha. Huh. Second time, meh. Third time, okay. Can we move on? Yeah. And so I hope, I hope, we don't know, because none of the, as of right now, as time recording, no other episodes have been released. Uh, we hope that from now on, John Claude always has a different way. One time, maybe he could drop the veg shell sign and it has the <laughs> note attached to it. I mean, they already drop it anyways. Who cares? Um, so, yeah. Any any last thoughts on this episode on the power of love? I think it was the better than the love. previous. Better than the endless supply of joy. Yes, yeah. even though the title was disappointing. It's the power of love. They they did have an actual silly segment. And they didn't disappoint us by pretending like they're gonna do the real silly song. Yeah, they didn't pretend like there was a silly yeah. song. <laughs> and even though they did the story of Ruth, it was slightly different, and I thought it was still. I guess I'm getting used to the stage production of the story instead of like an actual uh-huh. story. So yeah. it's it's a, it was all right. It was Once better. you remove your mind from what original Veggie Shells was, this is bad. This is better. I'm sorry. It's not that this is better than original Veggie Shells. It's just that like, this improves. Yeah. However, now you're hoping that they do they do mix it up every time because if they just do the same formula every time, you're gonna get really bored really quickly with. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Oh, I don't know what the play is going to be about. Well, I have a letter. Petunia reads a letter. And then, ah, oh, one, one, somebody who's not Bob's like, I know, I think I can solve the issue. And either they don't or do. Flip a coin. And then there's well, a... Bob so far has never solved anything. He no. never has an idea for anything. <laughs> well, like Except for Larry to runner. sing a silly song. All Bob can do is get everyone to work together, which I guess is an important it's thing that to that do. That is important. Mm-hmm. But he literally, as a showrunner, never knows what they're about to do. So, anyways, out of 10, what would you give The Power of Love? This one was more like a six, I think. Oh. And be more generous. So, uh, so the lowest each of us have given is the best Christmas gift, which is a, which we both give a three. That's mm-hmm. the lowest. And mm-hmm. I think this is definitely better than that. Um, and I the best one so far, I'm going to have to keep track of this. Which one has the best score chance of the Score mm-hmm. until eventually one reaches a one, one reaches a ten, then there's no point. Um, but as of right now, best Christmas gift, yeah, best Christmas gift, both got three from both of us. And then the pilot episode, whatever the first episode was, that one got a seven from me. I don't think this is good as a pilot episode. I think I'm gonna agree with you here. I'm, I'm gonna say six. I would have said a seven because there were some funny parts, but I think overall, especially getting the getting a retelling of the Ruth story, which I know this is meant for kids. So they probably not have not seen Duke and the no. Great Pie War from 2005. Mm-hmm. So for if you're listening to this, you're probably familiar with Duke and the Great Pie War. So take that as it is. If you are familiar with Duke and the Great Pie War, this is 6 out of 10. But if you've not seen Duke and the Great Pie War, go watch it. But <laughs> but if you don't watch it and you watch this, you'll probably think this is a little bit better than... Uh, maybe maybe you might give it a 7. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it at 6 as well. I'm going to agree with you here. Cool. All right. Well... That's it. Like there are four episodes up. We started all these casual reviews with f- knowing that there are four episodes and we we're going to do four reviews. So depending on how these reviews are, I mean, how you guys take these reviews, um, whether you like them or not, this is going to determine whether we do more. So if you guys, for the most part, if you guys uh, enjoy the reviews, we'll probably do them again. Um, we'll probably wait till a few more episodes come out to do them again. So anyways, Thanks for tuning in, and we will possibly see you next time. Bye. Bye. God made you special, and he loves you very much. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.